that is Josh Sexton. We are at the Anfield Wrap Studios. Studios slash offices. Secret, secret offices. offices. <laughs> um, making up your people that John Gibbons says walk here, but you actually don't. Um, there's a few people in the background here. Walk. They're actually working really hard. They Except are working. not me. Yeah, Craig. Not working hard. No, but did say he was like working the most hard. Not happening. Anyway, um, I'm in Liverpool this weekend for Liverpool against Southampton, the last game before the World Cup. And I'm going around to some content creators in Liverpool because they have a massive advantage of being in Liverpool. So I want to go around and I want to see what a day of Josh Sexton is like. Now, we're going to get on to basically Jordan Henderson writing a book off the back of speaking to you. But <laughs> all joking aside, this is a serious setup you have here. I, I've been here numerous times, I've done, done shows with you, I've been at your live shows and stuff like that and you know every time I come in there's new people here and there's just so much going on but did you expect that when you came in here? You know how, how long are you here? I've been here for six years now. So six? Yes yeah, and this, this is our... And you haven't aged a day by the way. <laughs> how is that? I'm, I'm not aged a day in about 12 years no. so I, I, I resigned <laughs> okay. to the fact it's probably not going to happen from, from this point but okay. this, this is about the third office we've had um, since since I've been mm. working here and this this is you know by a mile the best one. I mean you've, yeah. you've been in the office upstairs sort yeah. of looking out over, over the river and it's yeah. like it's a, it's a beautiful setting to, to work in. We've got our studio space here and everything now so we're like we're perfectly set up from, from this point really. Yeah and I remember being in here a couple of years back and this space that we're in now wasn't really used. You were using the studio inside, you were using this as more for merchandise and stuff yeah. like that and the office upstairs. I think you were in a different office as well when I was Yeah, here. we'd have probably been in the other corner. Yeah. yeah. Um but but is that just a sign of the growth? Because like I'm and I'm, the reason I'm asking that it came to me the other day was I watched the video the other day, firstly with Neil um up at Anfield at the club shop with regards to the um LGBT plus stuff that was going on and then the video um I'm not too sure the pub it was in but Virgil van Dijk and John Matt the tunnel. Yeah yeah, yeah. the Dovedale yeah. Yeah the Dovedale Towers that's about what it was but is that just a sign of where it's going because you know we see all the time where people go oh they get access and they get this and they get that and that's not only ourselves it's, it's other places as well but but it's not only it, it's it's not about access is it? it's about bringing the best content you possibly can and like even me coming in here over the last couple of years and the spaces, the way I use them differently just shows how much this has grown all the time. 100% and one of the things that we get sort of fed, fed back to us all the time, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's part of our like mission statement, I, I guess, is that we want to share the journey of and share the experience of supporting Liverpool Football Club. And we think, you know, we are we are one of the best at that, if, if not the best mm -hmm. at, at doing that, you know, there's there's loads of people from Liverpool who's, who subscribe to us who say it's like, you know, go in the match with your mates and listening to the, the conversations that your mates having the pub and there's loads of expats and you know people who've, who've moved away from Liverpool or people who have you know a distant connection for, for Liverpool wherever they may be across the globe who who come to the Amphir app because of that because of that same sort of shared experience because they want to you know hear what's going on for, for the fans of Liverpool Football Club so the access is, is you know it's not the most important thing in the world to us because not it's not what we it's not what we're doing day to day day no. to day we're, we're you know reacting to the game that's just gone we're looking to the, the, the next game that's, that's going ahead we're looking at all the sort of issues in, in and around Liverpool Football Club and, and you know giving our opinions on, on the way we perceive them and, and you know we're lucky enough that occasionally we do get to go and meet the players and and that kind of thing but that's that's in the, in the same way that you know anybody else yeah. who, who is who is bringing that same service would because I think there's there's a bit of sort of you know respect there from the club that but there's no we difference are. there's no difference between say you and James Pierce yeah because you have to go and get media accreditation and you have to, you know, I presume you have to sign up to all these things and there's certain things you have to abide by and you go in there as a media representative. You do, like, you know, you, you bring it to people differently, but it's still the same thing as James Pierce or, or anybody else on affairs and I'm a journalist and doing what they're doing. Am I right? No, there's, pr there's probably a bit more sort of onus on, on James Pierce to, to manage that relationship than there is mm. for us. We're, we're still in a position where we are, you know, fully independent, where we can criticise the club. And, and we have in the past, you know, when the club furloughed staff over lockdown, we did yeah. shows about it when the club tried to break away and join the Super League. We did shows by this, you know, there's countless issues that, you know, FSG is, as well as, you know, people at the club have, have created down the years. And we've called them out. We've called out managers in the past when we don't think they've been doing well in, in terms of performance and that kind of thing. I mean, there was even obviously the, the sort of mad spelling lockdown where I think Rob yeah. Gutman was calling for, for Jürgen yeah. Pop's head. We're not, we're not sort of 
averse to doing that and we'll never be in a position where where, where that is the, mm. the case we'll, we'll always be sort of fully independent and an independent voice for, for the fans and, and that's why I think the club respect us and respect that is because they, they know we are sort of we do take up that position that we are in the city that we're not we're not going anywhere so, yeah. so there is there does have to be a sort of you know beneficial relationship in terms of them for that, that, that you know knowing that we are a, a group of fans and if there was any sort of you know bad blood there then that's that's not a good look for them as much as it's you know not a good look for us to, to be going towards being in their pockets or being in FSG's pockets or any of that kind of thing so that's that's all just like nonsense that you know some people on, on the internet want to want to sort of spout up and it's, it, it comes with the territory I think and it comes with the territory of as you say developing the, the way we have down the years and you know, being such a, a sort of fast developing business. But the reason we are a fast developing business is because the two of the things that we always stick to is being authentic, being that authentic voice for the fans, you know, being independent and, and, and sort of showing integrity as well. And it's one of the most frustrating things whenever the FSG conversation in particular gets brought up and it's the idea that we're in the pockets because it questions that integrity that we have built up over so many years. And one of the reasons that when we, you know, we do get access and we speak to players, one of the things they love about speaking to us is that we're not there for a news line, we're there because we, we want to know from the fans' perspective what's going on in the, in, in the dressing room, what's going on in players' psyches when they're going to play, you know, how much they're enjoying, you know, being on this journey that we're on when Liverpool are reaching all cup finals and, and you know, challenging for league titles and stuff. So I think there's there's all sort of different strands to, to those relationships, but they're not, they don't have to be as sort of carefully create, curated and, and managed in the, in the way that journalists will. I know yeah, you're, been not, sort you're, of, not, you're not going to be put into one sort of section, exactly, that's your yeah. section for life. Yeah. You know, I was doing an interview earlier um, with uh, Dom from On The Road, um, the Road M Pod, yeah. and Dom took this up a couple of months ago. Um, difficult time in his life, took it up, and he's going about it a different way. He's talking about for, he's talking to former players, kind of prominent Liverpool fans, and, you know, he said the same when he was talking to ex-players. It wasn't like, what's your favourite game? What, what's this? It was like, what was it like to be a Liverpool player? You know, the pressures, you know, like we... You see players getting ridiculed all the time, and then you say to yourself, "Well, he's human." And when you when you hear that human element coming back, which I'm sure you do as well, because you, if you are close, not close to players, but you get access to players, you get to see that more human side. Because you know you have a hard day in work, I have a hard day in work. We go home, you take it hard if people are giving out. Liverpool Liverpool players are the same, you know. But how manic is it? Because look, I run a, I run a Liverpool podcast, right? I'm in Dublin, you know. I I'm, I'm working most all day on it but I have limited time as to when I can go on screen and do it you know like FSG tell you at 10 in the morning that you know oh they might be up for sale or somebody tells you FSG or might be up for sale um, or the club might be up for sale I'm looking at that and I'm saying well hold on let's collect me 10 year old at 3 o'clock this afternoon and I just can't do a show how mad does it get for you because you could be sitting up there working on something you could be doing the social media side or something whatever it might be design whatever and then that drops on a Monday at 11 a.m. Does everybody's heads fall off? Do does it just do you, do you just get around the table and go right? This is what we have to do because, as much as you know, you're doing reactions to football and you're talking, maybe transfers or whatever it might be. When these things drop, surely as a business, it has to be. We have to get this stuff out. It has to be great, but we have to get it out. We have to get the quality right and and quick because it seems to me that immediate. If you're not the first one out there. People just go, oh, well, I've heard that before, I don't want to watch. So is that crucial when it comes to stuff like that, like everyone's around the table going, yeah. right, what are we doing? Well, we, we release about 30 shows across audio and video a week, which obviously you know, that, that all needs to be sort of put into a schedule and stuff like that. We were actually in our in our weekly schedule meeting when the FSG news broke. It was me, John and Harry, it was sort of sat on the sofas upstairs. Uh, like planning out the schedule for the week, talking about what what you know what's coming up for the weekend, that kind of thing. You know, completely unaware yeah, yeah. of any yeah. news, bar the fact that Liverpool just beating Tottenham, and I think Southampton is slightly manager by that point as well. Um, and then Craig comes over and is like, "We probably need to do something around this because FSG have said they're going to sell the club." And we were like, "Oh, fucking hell!" Like that's, yeah, yeah. that's obviously something we're going to have to react to. But we just recorded the free show, so it's yeah. sort of, it sort of knocks things along in, in in that sense in terms of you know the schedule we've we've built for the week. I think John and Neil went and came down here, did a Talking Reds Live to react to it. We ended up putting the, the Talking Reds Live in the free show. So we have to, we have to sort of always move those things around. And um, we have plans to do an FSG show anyway, sort of like a bit of a, of a, of a not a retrospective, but like a bit of a, you know, wider picture of, of their reign at Liverpool. We brought that forward, ended up doing that on the Tuesday. Um, you know, basically talking about their ownership of Liverpool, things have got wrong, things have, they've got right during their time. Um, whether, you know, the next owner's coming in, what what sort of thing would be we'd be looking for. From them to be doing whether we want them to be spending more on the transfer market, whether we you know we don't want them to be sports washers and, and all those kinds of things, considering all the all the sort of different elements of that, and that that's obviously 
you know, that's that's a that's a process for us. Like you say, it do, it does involve us getting in a meeting room, getting around a table, and and discussing those things, and you know, going away and booking contributors for it as well. As one of the, the things we always say about the Amphi app is that the contributors are, are, the, are the lifeblood of it, and and they are. You know, we've got over a hundred people who come in and do podcasts and and videos for us, but they're also a hundred people who've, you know, mostly got full-time jobs and other responsibilities and yeah. kids and, and, and those kinds of things. And, and they're all different things to be considered. It's always dead funny because I, I run the customer service desk for us as well. And sometimes you get the odd email through being like, oh, can you not do another uh, agony hour or, or, or any of that, that, yeah. those kind of shows? When like, honestly, if you knew how hard they were to book yeah. and how hard it was to get those four people in, in, in a room, room at the, the same, same time. time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so the, these are all, all sort of different things we have, we have to consider. And that's that's the result of, you know, the, the, the growth the business has had is that we have to, you know, manage that many contributors, find ways to get them all, all sort of on shows at different times, find ways to get as many different voices representing things as, as possible, because that's one thing, you know, that is, is dead important to us, particularly around issues like the FSG stuff is that, you know, not everyone agrees here. Like my, my opinion on FSG is different to Kev Walsh's, for example, mm. or Ian Ryan's, or, the, you know, there's, there's, there's uh, you know, a hundred, literally a hundred different people down for up with a hundred different opinions. We're not all sort of singing off one crib sheet. We're not getting, yeah. you know, we're not getting backhanders off, off FSG or off Jordan Henderson to say nice things about them because not all of us do say nice things about yeah. them. I, I, I'm of the opinion that, you know, they've been decent owners in, in, in their time at Liverpool. They've done loads wrong. They've not spent enough in the transfer market as, as much as I would like them to, but there's also elements of my Liverpool support, which I do like that they've done that. I do like that they've, you know, improved the academy structure and, and brought young kids through. I do like that they've expanded Anfield because the previous owners were chatting spades in the ground in Stanley Park. Yeah, and, it was and amazing. None of that, time, none of that was coming to fruition. So I, I've sort of lived through all of that and can appreciate the good things FSG have done and also, you know, frown at the sort of negative things they've done and call out the negative things they've done. Um, but ultimately, to me, they're just, they're just you know, lads who, who own this football club. And I, I love the football club. I love the... 11 players who are playing on the pitch plus whoever comes off the bench sort of week to week and that's the main thing that I, like my sort of time is is invested in particularly because I'm, I'm the editor obviously so like that's that's what I want to sort of get across on the written side is, is again going back to that sharing the experience of support in Liverpool making sure that you know we're bringing and adding value to, to that space because it's you know it's great what you guys do at day trippers it's great what so many people are doing around the world now with with Liverpool podcast but one of the unique things that we can bring is that you know we are all match going reds we all go home and away in, and in Europe and I, I want us to be you know sharing that experience talking about when we go away in Europe and sharing those experiences of, of the police and of what it was like in the away end and all, all those kinds of different strands and that's what I think we sort of bring well to the space. Yeah and look you know I, I when I was coming over here to do these interviews and, and I, I four or five of them lined up and the one thing in common with everyone, obviously, is the backdrop that you have as, as the city of Liverpool. And <clears throat> the access in the sense of, I can I can get in a car and go to Anfield in two or three, yeah. four or five minutes and do a video outside. You know, I can meet a contributor out down in Kirby. I, you know, the sort of way, whereas, don't get me wrong, the people there's people all over the world doing Liverpool content and you have to do it to what suits them. I'm lucky that I'm, I'm a 25 minute flight away where I can come over, I know the city, I can. I know you, I know loads of lads here, I know loads of lads around Liverpool and I can go, can you talk to me? Yeah, and I can do something different over this. And this will come out as four or five shows next week um, because we're trying to deflect from this World Cup, which is a shambles. But, <laughs> you know, it's great to come in and talk because you see the other side of it, you know, I, I kind of get... Um, a bit of tunnel vision in what I'm doing, you know, like I get up on a Monday and I'm, I know I have to do this and I have to do that and, and everyone's the same, but it's great to step away from your, your comfort zone, I suppose, and come over here and go, look what they're doing. And not, not to come in and go, look what they're doing, I can do that because I clearly can't, you know, to have to be 20 of me or 25 yeah. of me. And I'm just not that asked to, to, do that, to do that much. But it's really interesting to see how this has grown, how the city has grown, I suppose, as well. And, you know, just to have that backdrop and, and that, just that ease of availability where where you can go up there, I can go here, I can go there, and you have brilliant buildings of backdrops, and it's, it's just, I just it was something that really interested me in coming over, because I thought when I come over, the easiest thing to do was to sit down and go, Josh, what do you think of um, the match last Saturday, and everyone going, what the, you do that every week, which we do, we, we all do it, don't we? Yeah, we, do, yeah. we pre-match, post-match, talk during matches, we do all that, so we're really interested in one, but when you, when you see people doing this sort of stuff, right, and you want to progress. I'm of the belief, and you can disagree with me if you want and try your own spin on it. I'm of the belief that enjoyment is massive in it. 
if you go up every morning and you enjoy what you're doing, you might get to the end of the day and you'll produce something and you go, seven out of 10, but I enjoyed it. So I go tomorrow and it might be eight out of 10. Whereas if you're getting up in the morning and you're doing this and you're not enjoying it and it's seven out of 10, you go, fuck this. You know, I'm not doing it tomorrow. I'll leave it to Wednesday, I'll leave it to Thursday. Is enjoyment massive in it? And I, I don't mean in like, you know, quality of the job you have, it's, it's progression. Enjoyment is massive to progression, isn't it? Because if people don't enjoy it, the progression is just not there. 100% and, and, and it's passion as well. It's, it's wanting to see, it's wanting, you know, good for the for the city of Liverpool. So you mentioned about the city of Liverpool being the backdrop. That's that's one of the things that we're sort of really passionate about is, is the fact that we are, you know, coming at this. And what a brilliant the city. The city. Exactly. Because I remember coming here early 90s and it was it's changed so much since oh then. it's yeah. it's it's night and day yeah it's absolutely night and day but that's and that's 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 one of the things that we want to see we want to see Liverpool, the city doing well as much as Liverpool, the club doing well we want to see you know the community around anfield being looked after and, and built up and you know causes that are supporting the people of Liverpool, and particularly you know the, the voices that you, you don't hear in the city of Liverpool, underprivileged people in Liverpool. like we want to we want to promote and and champion all those courses and, and that's why you know we've got our tour live podcast where we sort of have that space where we where we put inserts into that and we do things and we you know we try and you know sort of champion and look after those causes because we think that's you know important to us is that you know we're not the only ones winning from this like we we love you know working with day trippers i i, I was doing a podcast a couple of months ago with some lads over in india menace and the monk who, who who have been doing great things over there as well for sort of liverpool fans in in india like there's so there's so many of us in this space who you know we all we all want to be doing well because ultimately we're all championing the same thing we're championing the liverpool football club but for us there's that added element to it is that liverpool football club doesn't exist without liverpool the city you know it's literally in the name is why when fsg tried to copyright the name yeah. again we, we we were there criticizing because you you can't like you can't put a price on that that is you know this is the home to, to so many of us is it's my home at the, at the moment. It's my it's where my dad was born and that kind of thing. So it means it means loads to us to sort of secure not only you know progression for for us. We're we're that grateful for all the opportunities that we've had because of how much people have supported us down the years. But also that we get to continue to you know champion the football club more and do it on more stages and champion the city more on more stages. And and as and as you grow like over the six years you've been here and the amount of the years like 10, 11, 12 mm -hmm. years now at this stage. Yeah, as long as they're going and you know you progress and you get bigger and, and that's absolutely fine because there is people out there go oh look they're this and they're that you know not just for yourselves for other, for any company you yeah. know when they when they when they grow and they're pros the they're prosperous it comes yeah. into territory exactly that oh you get you know bono right bono is like worth what well, don't know how much right he's but people go well he pays all his tax in amsterdam or he's, he's all his accounts in amsterdam and you just get slated right yeah. that's how it works right but when you see things being given back to the city, because yes, you're using the city as a backdrop, yes, you're championing the city, but to see stuff being given back, I suppose, is probably one of the biggest things for me. When I when I look at this, like, don't get me wrong, content can be brilliant, A1, A1 top marks every week, but it's the things like the Dovedale Towers the other day, and it's the things like, you know, um, just every little thing, you know, everything you put some effort into, that gives back, I think it is absolutely massive. And I think that yourselves and others have to be applauded for it. You know, like we do charity work with the day trippers, usually around sick kids, you know, that just need monumental amounts of money. And we just put our name in the hat and we keep going until we get it. And we, we don't apologize for that. We just, we, we're going to annoy it for six months. We're not apologizing for it, deal with it. And these kids have gone from not being able to walk to, you know, climbing trees and stuff like that, which, which is absolutely amazing. So. It's been really interesting to listen about not only the day and the, the weeks and you know when stuff goes off how it, how it gets done because it was one thing i wanted to come over this weekend apart from drinks and <laughs> watch, watch the but, 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 yeah but but just just learn how different different content creators i suppose do everything day to day and how they react and how they move on and how they, they get bigger and so that's what's been really interesting the last thing because i have to let you go because i know you're really tired for time because despite craig saying that he runs this place i know it's you um, <laughs> while john makes up people and stuff like that um jordan henderson's book now you said it was the only thing you wanted to talk about but i've left it to the end <laughs> in all seriousness though to have a mention in his book must be in any professional footballer's book but the captain of liverpool that's lifted every trophy he can and um, to get a mention in his book must have been special it was yeah it was it was in, incredible like i like i wrote that piece around the time around that run to kiev in, in a time where i sort of felt particularly in, inspired i guess as, as a liverpool fan because i've watched you know many iterations of liverpool teams down the years who have not 
particularly felt close to or any sort of personal mm. connection to and that, and that team particularly in that run up to Kiev I think that, that was the most I, I sort of felt almost mobilised I guess in my Liverpool support in, in the sense that I felt like that was a group of lads that I could, I could get behind that cared about Is it close to where it's a big man? In, in, in a sense, yeah. in a sense, yeah, but all, also just because I, I I got the feeling that, you know, as much as we were at the Amphirap and, you know, the supporters all over the place were looking to champion local causes and, you know, causes of fans, those Liverpool players were looking to do that as well. Like the, the, the idea that they were, you know, coming up to the, the, the away end with the banner of Sean Cox, yeah. that didn't feel like that was some sort of like PR token exercise, gesture, yeah, exactly, yeah. not a token gesture. It felt like they were doing that because they're like, no, we, we yeah. genuinely care about this and we want to show that we care and we want to share this moment with the fans. And I wrote about that at the time and I don't remember the piece getting a ton of feedback really yeah. but it was one of the pieces that I wrote that I was sort of like a like a it's almost like a labour of love because I loved that Liverpool, that Liverpool team so to see it come up years later and see it come up from a player that I sort of see as having a really like human journey in, in football as well John Henderson has like, bring does that bring a right back into what we were talking about earlier about how players care and they see things and they react and you know you write something nice and they feel good about it and you remember it. if you write something or anybody writes something bad you know, you're not doing it out of viciousness, you're just no, doing really. it as your opinion, and it might be a negative one. But it brings it right back around, because you, we were talking about that earlier, where players can get affected with this, and now we're talking about, he's putting you in a book, he's talking, yeah. he's picking something out from four years ago. Well, it's double-sided, isn't it? Like, we, you, you, you used the word before, I think, like, enjoyment, and yeah. I think it's, it's, like, passion is almost the better way of saying that, because, like, for example, I don't enjoy doing the, the post-match show after Liverpool lose 1-0 no, to Nottingham Forest. Like, that's, that's, like, I don't come away from that, I'm like, oh, I, I really, get, I really I enjoyed that, but... But, but the, re the, reason I, the reason I was in that position, the reason I was able to do that is because I'm passionate and, you know, sometimes that passion will lead to you writing an article where you're, you know, criticising the player. Although I, I think it's always crucial to sort of acknowledge, like, like as you said before, that, it's, you know, it's human beings ultimately involved in this and football players aren't treated like that by the majority of sort of organisations that, that surround them. So I think it's important that we, that we, you know, always remember that, that they are human beings ultimately. But that's that's passion isn't it sometimes when you're passionate you're gonna, you are going to criticize something and and when something deserves credit you're going to you're going to champion that as well and i felt like that team at that time really did deserve championing and, and i'm pleased that sort of jordan henderson and it, again it shows that connection that he cared enough about fan causes to to have been reading the alpha apple i mean whatever capacity he's, he's come across that he's felt like that that is worthy of like being in his book and that means the world to me because you know i've i've, I've gone from this just basically being a dream to write about Liverpool one day, to be doing what I'm doing, to be living in Liverpool City Centre, to be having the the view over the Mersey that we do, like all, all these kind of different strands to it. That you know, once upon a time, everybody in this building dreamed of having. Mm. Like that, that to me feels like a like a nice full circle moment, and that's why I put in my, in my social media post around it that you know I've gone from being this little lad who you know loved Liverpool Football Club to to Liverpool's you know captain putting mm. putting that in his book. That was that was a, a massively special Make, moment for me. Makes it hard not to enjoy it, doesn't it? 100%, yeah. 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 Well, look, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, thanks for your time. You get back to running the Amphia rap <laughs> and the rest of the guys. Will... Make up a few more people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, maybe 11 or 12 the next time I hear it. It's been right, an absolute man. pleasure, man. Appreciate it. It's been it. an absolute pleasure.